A fracture is a break or disruption in the continuity of a bone, epiphyseal plate, or cartilaginous surface. If the broken bone punctures the skin, it is called an open or compound fracture. Fractures commonly happen because of car accidents, falls, or sports injuries. Other causes are low bone density and osteoporosis, which cause weakening of the bones. Epiphysis bulbus proximal or distal end of a long bone. Metaphysis section of bone between the epiphysis and diaphysis of a long bone. Diaphysis shaft of long bone. Physis growth plate. without manipulation method. No manipulation or open reduction is required. No incisions are made. The fracture is determined to be stable and non-displaced and can be splinted or braced without requiring manipulation. Treatment involves immobilization, using one of several methods, until union is established. With manipulation method. Manipulation is required to reduce an unstable end slash or displaced fracture or epiphyseal separation. Analgesia or sedation may be necessary to achieve reduction. The physician manipulates, pushes, pulls, or moves the area to align the fractured pieces. The physician may apply traction devices to the body to maintain satisfactory fracture reduction. A brace, splint, or cast may be applied to hold the bones in the correct position until they are healed. Skin or skeletal traction may also be applied. Pins, wires, or tongs are inserted into the bone for skeletal traction through a small incision without opening the fracture. A weight and pulley system is attached to exert a constant force of traction and keep the fractured bones in alignment. Closed treatment of proximal humeral, surgical or anatomical neck, fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation, with or without skeletal traction. Closed treatment of greater humeral tuberosity fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of humeral shaft fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation with or without skeletal traction. Closed treatment of supracondylar or transcondylar humeral fracture, with or without intercondylar extension, without manipulation. With manipulation, with or without skin or skeletal traction. Closed treatment of humeral epicondylar fracture, medial or lateral, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of humeral condylar fracture, medial or lateral, without manipulation. With manipulation. <laughs>
closed treatment of radial head or neck fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of radial shaft fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of distal radial fracture, e.g., Coles or Smith type, or epiphyseal separation, includes closed treatment of fracture of ulnar styloid, when performed, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of ulnar fracture, proximal end e.g., olecranon or coronoid process ES, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of ulnar shaft fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of radial and ulnar shaft fractures, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of fracture of weight-bearing articular portion of distal tibia, e.g., pylon or tibial plafon, with or without anesthesia, without manipulation. With skeletal traction and slash or requiring manipulation. Closed treatment of tibial fracture, proximal, plateau, without manipulation. With or without manipulation, with skeletal traction. Closed treatment of posterior malleolus fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of medial malleolus fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation, with or without skin or skeletal traction. Closed treatment of tibial shaft fracture, with or without fibular fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation with or without skeletal traction. Closed treatment of distal fibular fracture, lateral malleolus, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of proximal fibula or shaft fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of femoral fracture, proximal end, head, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of femoral fracture, proximal end, neck, without manipulation. With manipulation, with or without skeletal traction. Closed treatment of femoral shaft fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation with or without skin or skeletal traction. Closed treatment of femoral fracture, distal end, medial or lateral condyle, without manipulation. With manipulation. <laughs>
closed treatment of supracondylar or transcondylar femoral fracture with or without intercondylar extension, without manipulation. With manipulation, with or without skin or skeletal traction. Closed treatment of intertrochanteric, paratrochanteric, or subtrochanteric femoral fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation, with or without skin or skeletal traction. Closed treatment of carpal scaphoid, navicular, fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of carpal bone fracture, excluding carpal scaphoid, navicular, without manipulation, each bone. With manipulation, each bone. Closed treatment of metacarpal fracture, without manipulation, each bone. With manipulation, each bone. With manipulation, with external fixation, each bone. Percutaneous skeletal fixation of carpometacarpal fracture dislocation, thumb, Bennett fracture with manipulation. The physician manipulates a carpometacarpal fracture dislocation of the thumb to restore anatomical position and secures the bone with a wire. The physician determines the dislocated position of the bone. The bone is relocated to correct anatomical position using external manipulation. The physician drills a wire through the metacarpophalangeal joint, through the fracture and into the proximal bone. The drill entry point dressed and the hand is splinted. Closed treatment of articular fracture, involving metacarpophalangeal or interphalangeal joint, without manipulation, each. With manipulation, each. No manipulation is necessary. The physician manipulates the bones to restore anatomical position. The hand is splinted for stabilization. Closed treatment of phalangeal shaft fracture, proximal or middle phalanx, finger or thumb, without manipulation, each. With manipulation, with or without skin or skeletal traction, each. Closed treatment of distal phalangeal fracture, finger or thumb, without manipulation, each. With manipulation, each. Closed treatment of phalangeal shaft fracture, proximal or middle phalanx, finger or thumb, without manipulation, each. With manipulation, with or without skin or skeletal traction, each. Closed treatment of distal phalangeal fracture, finger or thumb, without manipulation, each. With manipulation, each. Closed treatment of clavicular fracture, without manipulation.
with manipulation. Closed treatment of mandibular fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of nasal bone fracture without manipulation. The physician treats a stable, non-displaced nasal fracture. No physical manipulation of the nasal bones or stabilization from splints is necessary. Treatment includes external agents, i.e., ice therapy and prescribing pharmacologic agents. Closed treatment of fracture of orbit except blowout, without manipulation. With manipulation, no incisions are necessary. This is a minimally displaced fracture of the orbital rims or walls that can be identified on X-ray. The physician realigns the fracture bones by using manual manipulation or with bone hooks and Carol Gerard screws. The realigned bones are stable and no internal fixation is necessary. Closed treatment of scapular fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation, with or without skeletal traction, with or without shoulder joint involvement. Closed treatment of vertebral body fracture, S, without manipulation, requiring and including casting or bracing. Closed treatment of a vertebral process fracture is only indicated if the spine is stable and the type of fracture does not require intervention. In the case of the cervical spine, the physician initially immobilizes the patient's neck and spine with sandbags or a cervical collar, as necessary. Is it appropriate to report code 22310 a physician orders the brace from a representative of an orthotics store who also fits the patient and applies the brace when the physician is not present? In order to report the casting or strapping codes, the procedure must be performed by a physician or by other personnel under the direct supervision of a physician. As direct supervision indicates, the physician must be present during the procedure when a non-physician is performing the splint application. From a CPT coding perspective, if a representative from the orthotics store applies the brace without direct physician supervision it would not be appropriate to report code 22310. Closed treatment of vertebral fracture, S, and slash or dislocation, S requiring casting or bracing, with and including casting and slash or bracing by manipulation or traction. Following dislocation or traumatic or pathological fracture of the vertebrae, the physician decompresses the spine into proper alignment and immobilizes the vertebrae. The fracture or dislocation may be realigned by manual manipulation of the spine. If traction is employed, the patient is placed supine with a halo or tongs affixed to the skull. General anesthesia may be administered. Traction is applied to the feet and the halo or tongs, decompressing the vertebrae. As the traction is increased in stages, the physician assures that there is no additional neurological deficit. Traction is removed when the desired correction of the spine is accomplished. The patient is immobilized with bracing or casting, such as a halo cast. The odontoid process, also known as the dens, is an upward projectile of bone that arises from the front part of the center of the axis vertebra.
closed treatment of bimalleolar ankle fracture, e.g., lateral and medial malleoli, or lateral and posterior malleoli or medial and posterior malleoli, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of trimalleolar ankle fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of calcaneal fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of talus fracture, without manipulation. With manipulation. Closed treatment of metatarsal fracture, without manipulation, each. With manipulation, each. Closed treatment of acetabulum, hip socket, fracture, S, without manipulation. With manipulation, with or without skeletal traction. Treatment of tarsal bone fracture, except talus and calcaneus, without manipulation, each. With manipulation, each. Closed treatment of sternum fracture. If the fracture is non-displaced and stable, closed treatment is initiated. Braces or splints are not used. The patient's activity is modified while the fracture heals. Closed treatment of ulnar styloid fracture. The physician treats an ulnar styloid fracture with a cast or splint. No manual manipulation and no incisions are required. Closed treatment of coccygeal fracture. For closed treatment of a coccygeal fracture, the physician will prescribe bed rest to alleviate symptoms. Sitting on a rubber ring may also lessen symptoms. Closed manual manipulation may be performed as well. Closed treatment of sesamoid fracture. The physician treats a fracture of a sesamoid bone in the foot without performing any open surgery. X-rays confirm a fracture of the sesamoid bone. The physician places the foot and ankle in a splint, brace, or cast to protect the bone while it heals. Closed treatment of greater trochanteric fracture, without manipulation. The physician treats a greater trochanteric fracture without manipulation. The fracture is not displaced and may be treated with skin traction while in white abduction. Other treatments include a spica cast applied for six weeks or protected weight bearing with crutches for four to six weeks. Closed treatment of patellar fracture, without manipulation. Closed treatment of a patellar fracture is indicated when there is 2 mm or less displacement, separation, or step-off. X-ray determines any displacement. The leg is placed in a long leg cast or splint to keep the knee immobilized for 3 to 6 weeks. Closed treatment of posterior pelvic ring fracture, S, dislocation. S. Diastasis or subluxation of the ilium, sacroiliac joint, and slash or sacrum, with or without anterior pelvic ring fracture, S, and slash or dislocation, S, or the pubic symphysis and slash or superior slash inferior rami, unilateral or bilateral, without manipulation. With manipulation, requiring more than local anesthesia, i.e., general anesthesia, moderate sedation, spinal slash epidural.
closed treatment of intercondylar spine, S, and slash or tuberosity fracture, S, of knee, with or without manipulation. There are three types of fractures of the intercondylar spine and tibial tuberosity. Types I and II of the intercondylar spine and type I of the tibial tuberosity are typically treated in a closed reduction. If the fragment appears stable and is not displaced, no manipulation for reduction is needed. If the fragment is displaced, reduction may be achieved by extending the knee. The knee may also be aspirated. A splint or a locked, long leg knee brace may be used for 4 to 6 weeks. Closed treatment of mandibular or maxillary alveolar ridge fracture. The physician stabilizes and repairs a fracture of the mandibular or maxillary alveolar bone without making incisions. The physician moves the fractured bone into the desired position manually. The fracture is stabilized by wiring both the involved teeth and adjacent stable teeth to an arch bar. Another technique utilizes dental composite bonding of both involved and stable teeth to a heavy, stainless steel wire. A customized acrylic splint may be used to stabilize the teeth. Intermaxillary fixation may also be applied. Closed treatment of transscaphopyrilunar type of fracture dislocation, with manipulation. After being placed in continual traction for 5 to 10 minutes, the patient's hand is dorsiflexed while maintaining traction. While stabilizing the lunate volar, gradual palmar flexion reduces the capitate. The wrist is immobilized in a dorsal plaster thumb spica splint at 30 degrees volar flexion. Usually, if the scaphoid is properly reduced, visualized via separately reportable radiographs, the midcarpal joint is adequately reduced as well. Closed treatment of Montegia type of fracture dislocation at elbow, fracture proximal end of ulna with dislocation of radial head, with manipulation. No incisions are made. The physician manually realigns the radial head back into position. If alignment of the ulnar fracture is not adequate, the physician may also manually align this fracture. Once satisfactory and stable reduction, realignment, is achieved, the elbow is placed in a posterior splint or cast. The elbow is immobilized at 120 degrees of flexion to prevent recurrent dislocation of the radial head. Closed treatment of nasomaxillary complex fracture, Leffert II type, with interdental wire fixation or fixation of denture or splint. The physician realigns a pyramidal fracture, Leffert II type, of the nasal and maxillary complex without making incisions. The fractured bones are realigned without internal fixation. Intermaxillary fixation is used to realign the fracture. Arch bars are placed onto the patient's upper and lower dental arches with individual wire ligatures around the teeth to provide interdental fixation. The proper occlusion is maintained by securing the maxillary and mandibular arch bars together. For edentulous patients, a splint or the patient's dentures can be modified to provide the necessary fixation. Closed treatment of palatal or maxillary fracture, Leffert I type, with interdental wire fixation or fixation of denture or splint. No incisions are made with this technique. Intermaxillary fixation is used to realign the fracture. Arch bars are placed onto the patient's upper and lower dental arches with individual wire ligatures around the teeth. The fracture reduction is maintained in proper occlusion by securing the maxillary and mandibular arch bars together. For edentulous patients, a custom-made acrylic splint or the patient's dentures can be modified to provide the necessary interdental fixation.
closed treatment of mandibular fracture with interdental fixation. The physician treats a mandibular fracture by applying interdental or intermaxillary fixation, wiring the jaws together, for stabilization. No incisions are made with this technique. The physician wires arch bars to the upper and lower dental arches with individual wire ligatures around the teeth or uses other wiring techniques to provide the intermaxillary fixation. Edentulous patients, without teeth, may have dentures or custom-made acrylic splints wired to the jaws first. The jaws are wired together to provide intermaxillary fixation.